Scano, Sago, and hello everyone. I know it's been a while, but here we are back together again. Off the hiatus from the Six Nations COVID-19 podcast, we're back up and running this Wednesday, June 24th. Now that we've taken care of that, a little introduction on my part. As you all know, or for those just joining us, I'm Lori Davis-Hill, Director of Health Services and COVID-19 Incident Command for a Pandemic Response under the current state of emergency that remains in place at Six Nations. I'm here, I'm ready to go, so let's get this podcast moving over to the wellness section. Natasha Slezak was not available to join us today, but she has passed on some knowledge and tips that I would like to share with everyone. The topic for today is information on quarantine and isolation. While physical distancing helps slow the spread of COVID-19, it is no secret that the effects of isolation can negatively impact our mental health. Now more than ever, it is essential for all to emotionally support each other while abiding by the distancing measures recommended by health officials. Quarantine is separating well people who have been exposed to the virus to see if they become ill. And self-isolation is separating people who have symptoms so that they can't infect others, including close family members. They're both needed to help prevent the spread of a virus in a community. In terms of dealing with isolation, people placed in quarantine or self-isolation may experience a wide range of feelings, including fear, anger, sadness, irritability, guilt, or confusion. They may find it hard to sleep. Some people might feel relieved. Humans are social creatures and need connection to others to thrive, which can make isolation challenging. The following suggestions might help you through this challenging time. Keep busy. Create and stick to a schedule for work, leisure, chores, meals, physical activity, and sleep. Some people will not be able to work when they are quarantined. Loss of income is a major source of fear, and not everyone has a supportive work environment. During this time, you can catch up on other tasks or projects at home. Some people may need to adjust their work environment when quarantined. Explore if your employer will allow you to work from home and attend meetings via teleconference or video conference. And do things that you normally love to do. Crosswords, puzzles, reading, TV shows, and listening to music. You can also maintain social interaction. Think of ways to stay connected to other people. By video chat, phone, chat, or text. Becoming a pen pal with a young loved one can have benefits for both the person in isolation and the youth practicing handwriting and reading. Talking to others and sharing how you're feeling is very important. So is asking for help when you're feeling overwhelmed. Practice self-care. As much as possible, prepare and eat healthy meals and drink lots of water. Stay physically active. Go online to find exercises you can do at home with no equipment. Practice relaxation or meditation. Get outdoors and enjoy nature. And prepare ahead. Plan ahead with family or friends to get food and supplies if you are quarantined. Use delivery services to order groceries. Your local grocery store might offer this service. Ask your pharmacy if they can deliver medications you need, or plan ahead to make sure you have enough medication to last through your quarantine. If you take opioids to either treat chronic pain or addiction, make sure that the pharmacist and prescriber are available to ensure an uninterrupted supply of your medication. Also keep a list of important numbers, including your doctor, public health, pharmacy, and hospital. You can support a loved one. Most spread of COVID-19 is between those who have close contact, so it is critical to create distance between the person at risk and others in the household. Unfortunately, this can worsen feelings of loneliness or abandonment, especially for someone who has a pre-existing mental illness or developmental problem. Here's how you can support a loved one. Keep lines of communication open and talk regularly through video chat, phone calls, messaging apps, or text messages. Be a good listener. Ask about their general health, food they might need, tasks that need to be done, and other ways you might help them. Help them stay distracted with work, hobbies, music, movies, and other activities. Help them structure the day and encourage them to limit the amount of news they consume. If they have a pre-existing mental illness, make sure they have access to their medications and that their condition is not getting worse. Connect them to a healthcare provider or any reliable and validated online support service. If you or your loved one are concerned about new symptoms, please follow your local health authority's guidance for accessing care. For more information or resources, please visit the Center for Addictions and Mental Health, www.camh.ca, Six Nations COVID-19 Facebook page updates, uh, The Big White Wall, which is an online peer-to-peer support community for your mental health. They have an anonymous online community where members can support each other in a safe environment, along with access 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
trained pr practitioners are available 24-7 to help keep community members safe, solve assessments and recommended resources, creative tools are available, and help to express how you're feeling. There's also a wide range of self-guided courses to do at your own pace. You can also contact our local Six Nations Mental Health and Addictions Services at 519-445-2143 and the Six Nations Crisis Line is available 24-7. They can be reached at 519-445-2204 or toll free at 1-866-445-2204. You can find more resources down below. Moving on to our stats. Since our last get-together, let's refresh our numbers. Since our last talk, the province has recorded a number of days of under 200 cases of COVID-19. However, yesterday was a bit of a spike with 216 new cases. Here at Six Nations, our numbers put, it, put us at 14 total cases of COVID-19. I'm glad to report that zero cases are active. 13 of these cases have been put away as resolved, and so far we have experienced one death. Testing, we have numbers are as follows. We have given tests to 903 people. 808 of those, te those tests have shown to be COVID negative. We are waiting to get back the results of 81 tests sent for lab processing. Two individuals are currently in self-isolation after talking with the in Public Health. Since our last talk, two of our neighbours have also been given the green light to progress to stage two, that being Hamilton and Haldeman and Norfolk. Let's see what their and other numbers are from local areas are showing. Mississaugas of the credit remain at one resolved case reported. Haldeman Norfolk Public Health Unit has 445 cases, 229 are active, 184 are resolved, and 32 deaths. Grant Public Health Unit reports 121 positive cases, three cases are active, 114 are resolved and four deaths. Hamilton Public Health Unit reports 814 cases. 50 of those cases are active. 720 are resolved and 44 deaths. The Toronto Public Health Unit reports 13,956 positive cases. 944 of those are active. 11,960 are resolved and 1,052 deaths. Now more than ever, if you find yourself in any of the settings, places, or locations that are open, please adhere to public health guidelines. Please monitor yourself and ensure as more things come back into play that you take care. We do not want COVID-19 as your dinner, dance, or travel partner. If you have the simplest or mildest of symptoms, the quickest and easiest way to settle all doubt in your mind is to get tested. There are no costs. It's simple, easy, and free. The Six Nations COVID-19 Assessment Centre is available to Six Nations community members and it can be reached at 226-446-9909 or toll free at 1-855-977-7737. You must have an appointment to be tested. Now let's say you did book a test and are waiting to hear your results. The best thing to do is to keep track or make a blog of daily basis, on daily basis of any and all people you have interacted with friends, family store, grocery store clerks, or etc. A good way to do that is to use your phone and keep track over the past two weeks and specifically the last 48 hours before you start to have symptoms. If you do this, you don't know how much you have helped, not just us, but the entire community because it helps us to identify where you might have picked up the virus and where it might have spread. Please continue to help keep Six Nations healthy and moving forward by wearing a mask in public, keep physical distancing, wash your hands frequently, and clean high-touch areas often. Yes, masks will protect. When I wear mine, I protect you, and when you wear yours, you protect me. They protect the both of us. So add your mask to your morning routine. Get up, get dressed, have breakfast, and pack your mask with your bag before heading out the door. And before we meet up again on Friday, stay cool as we are heading into another heat wave. Stay safe and remember these tips. Reduce, eliminate, or reschedule strenuous activities until the coolest time of day. Wear lightweight, loose fitting, light colored clothing to reflect the heat. Drink plenty of water, and even if you don't feel thirsty. Focus on non alcoholic and decaffeinated foods since alcohol and caffeine can dehydrate you. Try to stay out of the sun, take cool baths or showers, and remember your animal family members. Keep them with a supply of water and shade and ensure they are not too active in the sun. Also, monitor. Monitor yourself for signs of heat exhaustion. Remember to continue to watch Six Nations Matters and Healthy Six Nay on Facebook for online virtual programming being offered. Remember our frontline workers here on Six Nations and around the world. This virus is still here. 
Please stay home for them. Please stay home for all of us. Stay well. Stay safe. Yeah.